things now instead of three. And so I'm just going to give you a few verses and a few animals in the Bible and what we need to, what kind of animals we should like and what kind of animals in the Bible we shouldn't like. Amen. And maybe you got some on your own here tonight. Let's go ahead and ask the Lord to bless our little uh, Bible study here and we can have a good time in the Lord. Thank you, Father, for our church Sunday evening, and we pray, Lord, that you would use this time to edify us all. Uh, thank you for this family-like environment, Lord. It's always a blessing to come to church on Sunday night, and God be with the, the saints that are, uh, Lord, truly uh, desire to be uh, in church when the doors are open, every chance they get. And Lord, I pray you get a blessing, they'll get a blessing, and you'll get a blessing from us being here tonight. And Father, may we be pleasing in your eyes tonight. Help the young people, especially. Uh, Lord, they've got so many challenges, Lord, at school and life, and I just pray that you continue to help every one of them, Lord, to make good decisions, Lord, as they, as they uh, build their future with Jesus Christ. And bless all, every family here tonight represented, represented, and Lord, I pray that you just give us a good time in your word, and we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. Amen. All right, now there's some animals, I'm going to give you four animals that God kind of said, watch out for all right, and let's look at the first one here. It's called uh, the Little Foxes. Okay, first we're going to look at Song of Solomon. And here's a love story. The Bible has it all, amen. It has, it has action. It has adventure. It's got horror. <laughs> it's got Superman. It's got the Lone Ranger. And uh, here you have one of the most beautiful uh, love stories ever written. It's called the Song of Solomon. And the wisest man that ever lived, and he knew quite a bit about love. He had a thousand women in his life, and uh, he knew a lot about depression, too. And uh, imagine that must be difficult, managing all your wives and keeping them all happy. And uh, it was so bad that he got so backslidden and got away from God, trying to please them all instead of please the Lord. Uh, what did he say? He had 700 wives and 300 concubines, or vice versa? Does anybody know exactly? That's about right, right? And what's funny is when he was writing along there in Ecclesiastes, you ever note that where it says, he says, a, a one man among a thousand and not a woman among a thousand? Well, what a chauvinist he was, right? I mean, <laughs> he said, he, he had a thousand wives, so he said, I couldn't find one good one in a thousand. <laughs> That's pretty bad. So he said, one man, what is that, man, one man among a thousand. That's in the Bible. That's in the Bible. So uh, I don't know uh, what the context was, to be honest with you, but. Here he was writing about a woman that he did find. And he talked about this woman was, she was, he said, my beloved is mine. He loved her above all the others. And it's a picture of Jesus Christ having his love for the church. And he loves you more than anyone in the world. Amen. Because you're his bride. He selected you above, of all the fair virgins and all the princesses of the world. Aren't you uh, thankful that Jesus Christ found you and made you his bride? And so when you read this, you can read this story. You can read this story with the idea that Christ has embraced you and he's got his eye on you and you're the apple. You're just precious in his sight. I am my beloved and my beloved, my beloved is mine. Uh, he feedeth among the lilies. The Bible says he's the lily of the valley and the rose of Sharon. He feedeth among the apple trees. There's some beautiful verses in here. And he says that, you know, he came and knocked on her door and she was, oh, I've already, you know, gotten into bed and I, you know, I'm going to have to put my slippers back on. Yeah, you read that? And she was, she's a little bit disturbed that he came so late. And so she said, all right, I'll get up. And by the time she came to the, to the door, he was gone. And uh, she went out looking for him. You ever read that? And then she got beat up out there in the streets. It's all in the Bible. It's a pretty wild stuff here. And so, what's a picture of? You know, the Lord's going to come back someday, and a lot of Christians are going to be, oh, Lord, I'm not ready for you. I kind of got snoozing here, and I'm in my bed clothes, and I got my nightgown on, and my slippers on, and Jesus, don't come tonight. I got too much going on, and I'm not ready for you. Amen? <laughs> and uh, you can get that way. You can get so busy down here that you forgot you're in a love story. Amen? With Jesus Christ. And he loves you. Yeah. And so, here, I want to look in the first place is Song of Solomon, chapter 2. And uh, you don't need no romance uh, stories when you got your Bible. No greater love. No greater love than the love of Christ. And the Bible says here the first group you got to watch out for is in verse 15. Take us the little foxes. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines. For our vines have tender grapes. 
you know, you got to watch out for those little foxes. What are those little things in lives that uh, add up? They don't, they don't seem significant at first. He even mentions, he said, take us, the foxes. We've got to trap them little things. Because you know what? They're, they grow, and they grow in number. And he said, they're little foxes. And you as a Christian need to be aware that you have uh, tender grapes in your life. You have a fruit, you have a vineyard that you're supposed to be growing for the Lord. And you know what messes up that vineyard? Little things. Little things. It's the little things in life that you got to watch out for more than anything. It's the little things that add up in your life. A uh, little sin in your life can grow. Amen? And so these are like a picture of little sins in your life. Little bad habits. Bible calls them, and, I, and that's a kind of an interesting thing. I think it might have been Andrew that brought up the thing about besetting sin, or Bob. He said besetting sin is lack of faith. He said, uh, he said uh, uh, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. He said it's the sin, there's one sin. What is it? Lack of faith. Lack of uh, believing what God said in his word, like chapter 11, the great heroes of the faith. Is that what you said? I said actually that it was not enduring. Oh, not enduring. Because that's All right. what Christ kept saying. He, right, he endure, endured, endure, endure, right. As he endured, uh, looking unto Jesus, uh, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. So, uh, but the, uh, you know, I'm not certain if that's true, but I've always said that every Christian has some kind of besetting sin. Some little thing that just keeps popping up in your life. It just seems like you get victory for a while, and the devil will send a little thing in your life, maybe somebody that's a cigarette. It could be a little thing in your life. I've seen some Christians get victory over that thing for four, five, six years. You gotta watch out, them little foxes will come back. And they're pesky little things, amen? Sin can be a pesky little thing. And so he says here, let us take the foxes that spoil the vine. And Christian, there may be something small in your past, don't overestimate it. Don't underestimate it, I should actually say. Don't underestimate the damage that it can do. Uh, there was a train, I was reading about it, you know, some flies got in some oil, and it caused the brake system to break down. The train went off the track and people died, all because some flies got into the oil box. You know, it could be a little thing like a bolt. You could be something small in a vehicle. You say, that's just a little thing, I'll just ignore it. It could be low tire pressure on your vehicle. You say, I'll just get it later. I'll get it later. And you know, there's things in your life and sin in your life. And you say, I'll deal with that later. Hey, that thing can kill you. Amen. Amen. And there's sin in your life, little foxes. That's one of the animals the Bible talks about. They're cute little things, aren't they? You ever see a little fox? Hey, he don't think they're cute. I think they're cute. They got a little bushy tail and they're so adorable, right? A little gray fox or a little red fox. And you know, those things are cute little animals. And you can actually make pets out of them, but they're still wild. They're still wild. That old nature's gonna come back. You got people that take wolves and try to, or they try to raise bears. One guy went up there to Alaska and lived with the bears and he, he was, you know, and they gave him names. They finally ate him, you know. And you think you got control of that human nature. Uh, that fox is a wild animal and you got a bad nature. And Christian, you got an old nature and it's there and it is dangerous. And Song of Solomon says, let us take the foxes. That means trap them and get them out and kill them. And uh, you got to kill sin out of your life. Let's go to another one. Isaiah 56. Isaiah 56. Just some character study here tonight. Isaiah 56. You have uh, what the Bible says here is dumb dogs. I, I love dogs, don't you? How can dogs be an unclean animal? It just seems unfair, doesn't it? Doesn't it seem like it's not fair? There's not going to be no dogs in heaven. You know, the Bible says uh, dogs are without. So I, you're just going to have to reconcile that with God. You're going to have to take it up with God. God just said there's just no dogs. I mean, I love dogs, man. That's man's best friend. I mean, they're smart and good animals. But I saw one the other day eat the other dog's crap. I mean, it's just, I used to let that dog lick me in the face. Not until after I saw that. <laughs> he said, don't let that dog lick you anymore. And yeah, it's, they, they eat the worst stuff. <laughs> They'll lick it and eat it. And they just dirty. There's a dirt. The Bible says beware of dogs. Amen. Does it not? Three little words. Beware of dogs. I don't, I don't always have to like it. There's things I just wish that weren't the way they were. But God's word tells me what's good and what's bad. Amen. I don't have to like it. You don't have to like it. I like dogs. God don't like dogs. <laughs> Amen. He just said dogs are without. Beware of dogs. Dogs are eating, licking up the blood of Jezebel and licking up the... There ain't no... I don't see anybody has a, 
a, a dog in the Bible that God, oh, that's a good dog, you know, Lassie and all that. God just says, beware dogs. He says over here over, uh, that men are like dumb dogs. 56 verse 10, he says here, his, his watchmen are blind, they are all ignorant, they are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. I and mean, there's nothing worse than, than a dog that can't bark. There was a man one time, he uh, heard some, his dog was out there uh, barking, and that dog was waking him up. He got up around midnight, and he went out there and looked around, and he couldn't see anything dangerous, and he uh, kind of yelled at the dog and said, shut up, and get back, got back in his house. And um, a little while later, about 1 o'clock, that dog started barking again, like a rabbit. He went out there, looked around, there was nothing there. Uh, next, you know, went over to the dog, and he sh shouted at it, and told him to shut up. He's going to show him a thing or two. If he doesn't shut up, let him get to sleep. About 3 o'clock at night, the dog started barking again. He went out there and kicked that dog in the ribs, and he yelped and ran into his house. About 4 o'clock, the dog keeps barking. He goes out there and shot the dog and killed it. Well, he gets up in the morning, and everything he had was stolen. Amen. <laughs> so it shows you for shooting that dog, right? Well, your conscience is a dog. It's supposed to bark when somebody's trying to steal something from you. You know, a dumb dog is not worse than a dumb dog. A dumb dog means he doesn't bark. He doesn't make any noise. What is a dog supposed to do? He's supposed to bark. He's supposed to make some noise. But uh, dumb dogs, you know, you got a lot of people today that are afraid to witness for Christ. You know what you are? You're a Gentile dog. Right. Ain't nothing worse than a dumb dog. Dog doesn't bark. You're supposed to warn people. You're supposed to tell people there's a danger. Hey. And that don't matter if your master shoots you or not, but he was doing his job, that dog. That man was stupid because he should have listened to his dog. That dog was doing his job, barking. I mean, some dogs would drive you crazy, amen? I've had dogs that kept me up all night long in Ukraine, man. I, I was thinking about poisoning, too, you know. I mean, I, I hear people, oh, somebody, I can see why somebody poisoned. I mean, you can't sleep weeks on end, man. Shut that dog up, man. You're putting things in your ears. But uh, that dog's doing his job, amen? That dog's supposed to bark. And Christian, if you're a saved Gentile dog, your job is to bark. God created you to preach. God created you to be a witness for Christ. Don't be a dumb dog, amen? amen. And uh, you need to be a, a dog that will obey. Like I said, I preach in, uh, there's some good dogs. There's some things I've learned from dogs. Dogs are loyal, amen? And dogs will, you can beat them up, and you can be mean to them, and they're still going to love you. Amen. That's one thing I tell you. Dogs are just loyal. They'll put up with just about anything. And um, God, would to God that we could have that kind of character. Amen. Amen. And some dogs. There's some dogs out there that put Christians to shame. Amen. And uh, let's go to another place here. Let's go to Acts chapter 20, verse 29. This one here, we're going to look at some uh, things that come in the house of God. Acts chapter 20, and verse 29. You got to beware, Christian. There's some things you got to beware of. False prophets won't preach the word. They won't warn people. God says their prophets are like dumb dogs. They won't bark. Well, that's not a good dog. You need a dog that's going to bark at you. Once in a while, you're going to get it from me. I'm going to bark from the pulpit. Amen. That's what a preacher's supposed to do. He's supposed to bark. Uh, dumb dogs. You don't want dumb dogs in your life. You don't want little foxes in your life. And I'll tell you another thing you don't want in your life. You don't want grievous wolves. Chapter 20, verse 29 here warns right after the blood of God. He's saying, be careful. Verse 28, be, take heed. Therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. There you go. The blood of God was shed for mankind. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. Mark it down. Acts chapter 28, verse 28. Take heed. God shed his precious blood for you. It says the blood of God Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. And so beware, because there's going to come some, some false teachers. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. They say about wolves, they don't just kill one sheep to eat it. They'll kill every sheep in the flock till every one of them's dead. I've seen it on a video. And uh, that wolf will get in that, in that pen, and that wolf will get in there. I seen a guy had a video camera over his sheep pen, and that wolf got in there and killed all 25 or 30 sheep. He just got them by, killed every one of them, grabbed by the neck, killed them, choked them, and he just was not satiated until every last one of them sheep was dead. That's the way the devil is. He's grievous. It grieves you. They, don't, they just hate your nature. They hate that you're a sheep. 
The world hates you because they're still wolves. The wolves are false teachers in the Bible. Wolves are false. They're, they're, they're uh, like the Pharisees. He said, beware of the Pharisees. He said, beware of them because they're like wolves in sheep clothing. They come to you as wolves in bearing, in wearing sheep's clothing. They want to look religious like, like they're you, but they're grievous. And they want to kill churches. It, that's their agenda. Their nature is that this church doesn't stand. The devil doesn't want you to live. He doesn't want our, our, he doesn't want our flock to thrive. He doesn't want us to bear children and bring souls into the body of Christ. That's what a flock will do. That's what a shepherd wants the flock to do. He wants to mature it and grow it and he gets some fleece out of it and, and, and uh, use those sheep and get milk out of it. And God gets a pleasure out of you. And if our church continues to grow, that's a blessing to God. Amen. Well, it's good to have new people come in the church. Amen. That's what we ought to be doing, bringing some new uh, baby lambs. When, when Jesus talked to Peter, we looked at this tonight. He said, uh, lovest thou me? He said, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said, feed my lambs. You know what you need to do is you're a sheep. You've been saved five, six, seven, eight years. You ought to go out and bring some little lambs into the flock. Amen. You know, you ought to be out there trying to bring others to Christ. And there's grievous wolves. They hate souls. They hate sheep. And they hate you. We're the sheep of God's pasture. And you need to be aware of those false teachers. They're teaching all kinds of manner of lies. And uh, they do uh, attack this book. They do try to tear down your faith in the Bible. They want you to doubt. I had a brother talk to me today about how the Bible had a mistake because it said uh, the Bible, old Bible said whale, or the new Bible says whale and Jonah, and the old King James Bible said uh, great fish. And I said, no, brother, it always said great fish. The King James Bible hasn't changed in 410, 400, yeah, 410 years. Amen. What they wrote and what they printed is still the same book that you're reading right there. Amen. Yeah, they made a few grammatical changes because back in the day when they printed this King James Bible, they had to fill up the whole row. So sometimes they put two E's on a word. You ever notice that? The old, I got one in my office if you want to see it. It's about the size of the original King James Bible, about that tall. weighs about 25 pounds. And they printed those Bibles and so they, wanted to, they had what margin settings. And so they'd make some of the words... They throw a couple extra E's in the line there. And that's what they did. It, was, it wasn't about how they spelled a word. They, could, they said, oh, it doesn't matter if there's three E's in the word, see? Just throw another E in there. And uh, that way they had it margin set. And so as time went on, they made some additions to bring it back into what the men actually wrote before the first printing went out. And they just brought it, into, into the, uh, brought it up to speed as to what they actually wrote when they, when they translated the King James Bible. I think there's, I don't know how many, there's probably about 20 different editions over the years. In 1613 and 1620 and 1635, all the way up to 1769, I believe it is. And that's the Bible we have right now. It's actually the last edition in 1769. Uh, and what they did was they made changes in the, in the way the, uh, the words were written. But this is the same King James Bible with 1611. I could read you the one right there in my office and it'll be exactly the same words you're hearing in this book. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. There's people out there trying to, they're grievous. They're trying to get the sheep away from the, the word of God and get you away from the pasture. Look in Psalms 100, verse 3. Psalms 100, verse 3. You know, we are, there's some good animals in the Bible. We're to be sheep. Psalms 100, verse 3. I don't particularly like to be likened unto a sheep. I mean, there's nothing noble or wonderful about being like a sheep. Sheep are kind of dumb and boring. Amen. I don't know if you ever had sheep, but there's not a bunch of excitement hanging out with sheep. I mean, really, it's not. They just kind of stand there chewing. Uh, cows are about just as boring as sheep are. Um, unless you're rolling them down a hill at night. I don't know if you ever did that. Cow tipping stuff. But in any case, uh, Psalms 100 verse 3. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. God has a pasture for us. We're his people. And uh, there are wolves trying to get into churches right now. They try to get into the church. That's a Paul's warning. He's saying right here, beware, don't let their false doctrine. You know, there's people trying to invade our church. Maybe not sit in the pew here, but they're trying to pass a book to you and say, read this book. And it's full of a lot of nonsense. Full of false teachings. I can't be everywhere. I don't know what you're reading. 
I don't know what radio station you're listening to, but there are wolves out there trying to invade your faith and trying to get into this church and trying to thwart you from what the Bible teaches and from what we teach in this church. There's people coming here, they're speaking in tongues. There's people coming in here that don't have a King James Bible. There's people that come to this church that believe we're going into the tribulation. Uh, yeah, right here in this church. Where'd they get it? They didn't get it from this, this pulpit. They got it from the radio, or they got it from a friend, or they got it from some book in a Christian so-called bookstore, Christian bookstore. Watch out, Christian. There's grievous wolves out there not sparing you. They want to destroy your faith in what God's word says. Amen. They want you to doubt. They want you to start thinking you're going to go through the tribulation, no matter what the Bible said. And there's false teachers out there. And they're grievous. It grieves you. It grieves the saints. Amen? Amen? It ought to grieve you that there are people out there. It says right here in Acts chapter 20, verse 29 and 30. He said, he said, uh, and for I know that after my departure shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock, and also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. There are people that just want to get the limelight. They just want people to follow them. They don't love God's word. They don't love God's people. They just want someone to follow them. And they're not called and they're not given the gift to preach the word of God. They're wolves in sheep clothing. Beware. And lastly tonight, let's look in 1 Peter chapter 5. There's another enemy, your soul. And that's, the Bible says here in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse what? 8. So you've got to watch out for little foxes, little sins in your life, little things that add up, get you out. The sins of the world, sins of the flesh. Then there's people that will come into your life. There's people that are lost, that pose themselves to be Christians. And they'll try to get you out of the church and out of the doctrine. Paul warned you. And he said, after my departure shall enter in grievous wolves, not sparing the flock. And even of your own selves shall certain rise up. He says to draw away disciples after them with false doctrine. And then lastly, there's someone that hates you. First Peter chapter five. He warns you here in the Bible again. He says, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. You have a roaring lion out there. And that's a big one. Amen. There's little foxes and those can damage you. But Satan hates you. Satan hates you because you're saved here tonight. And he wants to take you out of the fight. He wants to terrify you. And uh, he's a roaring lion. And he has power. He has fangs. But we have a shepherd like David who will kill the lion. Don't flee. Don't run. Don't be afraid. Stand your ground. Pray, Christian. Believe in God. He's able to do great things. Amen? Amen. We prayed the other night for a young lady that God would heal her from that cancer and she'd get a clean slate next day. She went in and I believe like Andrew, God heard our prayers. There's, there's so many times we've prayed so many times in my life. I've seen God answer prayer and I'm not afraid because I have a great Savior. I mean, half the time, I don't know what I'm going to do, where I'm going to go and how it's going to be. And I don't, you have to live by faith. Amen. Life can be terrifying. And the devil will roar and let him roar. Don't be afraid. Trust in the Savior. Trust in your good shepherd. He'll take care of the little foxes if you'll let him. He'll take care of the dumb dogs if you'll let him. He'll take care of the grievous wolves if you'll let him. Amen. He'll take care of the roaring lion if you'll let him. Amen. When that devil comes knocking on your door and you see it's the devil through the people, you say, hold on, devil. I've I'll I'll got to get Jesus. He'll answer the door. <laughs> You got to let Jesus answer the door. He's trying to tear you up and tear your family up. You got a great Savior. He'll answer the door. Amen. He'll take care of your enemy. You're, maybe you're trembling tonight. Some decisions you got to make in your life. Cast your burden upon the Lord. He will sustain you. He will never suffer the righteous to be moved. Amen. Be strong in the Lord, the power of his might. Amen? Amen. One preacher said, I think it was John Knox. He said, one man and God are of the majority. Amen. I love that Amen. statement. Amen. One man and God is the majority. That's all you need is God in your life. Right. That's all you need is your Savior. That's all you need is a little sheep. That's all you are. You're the sheep of his pasture. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So let's trust the Lord no matter what comes our way as a Bible Baptist church. 
We're going to keep on pressing forward and following the shepherd. He sings the song and we follow him. They say out there in Israel that the shepherds all have their own tune. Because all the sheep will get out there in a big passion. They'll kind of mix up together. And they'll eat the grass out there all day long. And in the nighttime when they want to get them back into their own little, uh, I don't know, what do you call that? The, the, the sheep coat. The flock. The sheep coat, what do you call it? Yeah, the flock of sheep, but the, the place they keep in the Bible is called a sheep coat, C-O-T-E. And when he bring back that sheep into the sheep coat, he says that uh, they say that they sing a song and the sheep, they know their own master's voice and they will separate from all the other sheep and they'll start following his voice back to their own place of safety. And also, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and they follow me. Amen. And, I, and I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Amen. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. Uh, wait, he says, uh, what does he say? I missed the part. No, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. No man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Amen. Isn't that good to know tonight that you're in the Savior's hands and you're in safekeeping? Amen. No matter whether it's your little setting, the setting sins in your life and the little foxes, little things that are irritating you and trying to build up in your life. Maybe it's not that. Maybe it's just some, uh, you haven't been a big witness for Christ. And the devil uh, is getting on you. And, the, hey, the Lord says, you know what? I'll, I'll give you strength. And, I, and the Lord's he's plenty of in mercy and patience. But you know what, Christian? We need to be, we need to be preaching the gospel. Amen. We need to be telling people about Christ while it's still day. There's nights coming when no man can work. One day your life's going to be over. One day your time is going to be done. And you're going to say, what have I done for Jesus? What have I done for Jesus? And we have some great examples in this church, amen, some great soul winners over the years. Right. Let's, let's go out and, and not be a dumb dog. <laughs> amen, let's be a witness for Christ. Amen. And then let's watch out for false doctrine. We do a lot of Bible teaching in this church. Just open your ears. You're going to get an earful, amen? amen. We're going to give you a lot of verses, but you've got to study your Bible. And you've got to be aware because there are false teachers, unawares, crept in. And they're trying to take you out of the body of Christ and get you away from sound doctrine. And lastly, the devil is very powerful. I don't want to trifle with him. He is a, he is a powerful being. And he's more, more powerful than I could ever even go near him or deal with him. He doesn't even know who I am, probably. He, he's got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> and, but I tell you what, I, I just pray the Lord Jesus Christ keep me away from that roaring lion. Amen. Be, be sober. Be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Many a Christian have fallen in these last days. So Christian, be vigilant. Let's go ahead and sing a song here, Brother Joel. Come on up. There's a lot of animals in the Bible, amen? Go to the ant thou slugger. Be wise as serpents. What does it say? Harmless as doves. Lots of great examples. And these are some for us tonight. Amen.